welcome back to my channel my name is Austin Becker and I'm really glad to have you here please do want to the subscribe button before you leave and also give this video a very big thumbs up at the end if you enjoyed watching it okay I know a lot of you have been seeing the gist flying around on the internet you know there's been a lot of gist on the tube there's been a lot of gist on the gram but you guys are like Becca where are you we need to hear from you come here I'm here to pay my debts okay I'm telling you guys that a lot of things have been going on in Biggie's house I know it's been just one day and a few hours because it's not complete two days yet but the madness in Biggie's house, oh my god. You know what, let's just start out with the head of house challenge that happened last night, okay? And by last night, I mean Monday, because you guys are going to be watching this on Tuesday morning, right? As usual, Biggie instructed the housemates to move into the arena for the head of house challenge. And I know that some people had some things to say about Biggie's voice yesterday. Guys, I'm here to agree with you. I don't understand this Big Brother's voice. The guy sounds very, somehow, it doesn't sound like the Biggie that me I have come to love. The biggie that I have come to know, the biggie that I have come to understand, okay? So this is me trying to figure out what this big brother is like, what gets him upset, what kind of things would the housemate do that would trigger him. Because I mean, to some extent, I could tell last year the kind of things that the housemates would do. That would make Biggie just tell them, okay, all of you just stand up, don't move, don't drink water, don't blink your eyes. You know, there are some things that the housemate could do that, you know, would definitely make him upset. But I'm definitely sure that with time, yeah, we'll get to understand this big brother. Because for me, he's not doing a bad job either. It's just that his voice is different from the big brother that we know. But then again, everybody deserves a chance. Because we're not be using the same big brother every year. We need to give new people chance. In fact, I might be the next big sister. Anyways, on the more serious note, guys, the housemates got into the arena. In fact, let me get my note because Biggie mentioned some vital points that I want to also mention to you guys. First of all, he mentioned that whoever wins the head of house challenge would gain immunity for eviction for the week. So what that basically means is that you cannot be evicted once you are the head of house. Secondly, you would have exclusive access to the head of house lounge. I told you guys yesterday that the head of house lounge is a sight to behold and that whoever gets into that lounge first definitely going to enjoy and then finally he mentioned that whoever wins the head of house challenge has the right to choose any other housemates as his or her deputy now i mentioned this yesterday but i wasn't sure how this process would be done but then biggie said they could pick anybody you know the person doesn't have to really do anything just when you vibe with the person and all that you can just choose the person to be your deputy and you guys both have access to stay in the lounge okay now before the game started biggie decided that it was time for them to have a little chat you know, and while he was talking to them, he gave them two important advices. Now, let me read that out. Either two or three. First of all, he said, try to get to know yourselves. He actually advised them to ask questions. You know, he told them to ask questions like, if money was not an issue, what would you buy? Or, what is your favorite old school song? You know, just questions like this that will help you understand the other person. He wants them to ask those kind of questions. And the reason he told them to do this, the reason he told them to take this seriously, is because there will be a house quiz on Thursday evening. And the quiz will be all about the housemates. You know, you answer questions about the other person, and the other person answer questions about you. So, it is really imperative that they ask themselves questions. So, now they can know. If they won't ask, me, they ask. If they don't want to ask, now they do. Now, straight into the games, yeah. Biggie mentioned that throughout their stay in the house, the head of house game will not change. Okay, so there's a particular game that the housemates are going to play continuously till the end of the show as long as it has to do with the head of house challenge. Now the best way I can actually describe this game to you guys is if I refer to it as a Ludo. Now it's not a Ludo per se, but then it just has the same vibe, the same um, feel as when you're playing a Ludo. So let me explain. In the arena games here, there's like a big mat that has boxes. So this mat basically has the template of a Ludo. But then in some particular boxes, you have instructions. Or would I call this the stick and ladder? Yeah, it might just be the snake and ladder game. Now, once the buzzer rings, all you need to do is to roll your die, okay? Make sure to get a six before you actually start. Now, they all have effigies that have their names on it. So, these effigies are more like those seeds that you have in your Ludo template, yeah? So, for example, when Eric was called upon to play, all he had to do was roll the dice, get a six, then put his effigy that has his name on the start point, and then, you know, go back, roll a dice. If you get three, you take three steps. Go back, roll a dice, if you get two, you take two steps. And in some of the boxes, there were actually instructions. So for example, if you roll a three and you take the three steps, if there is an instruction in that third step, you have to follow it. Some of the instructions included you drinking a bottle of water from start to finish. Secondly, you might have to eat three boiled eggs on the spot. Thirdly, you might have to hop around the mat. Next, you might even have to go back to a number that you have passed. You know, there's a part where when you get to like number 15, for example, that number 15 instruction says, go back to the start point. 
so you have to start all over again and all the housemates had one minute each to play this game now the whole idea is whoever gets to the final step that says head of house you automatically become the head of house but then before you get to that head of house position you have to face a lot of stumbling blocks and all of that stuff so i think the best way to describe this game is the snake and ladder i don't know if i made sense but this is like the best way i could actually describe the game to you people okay and let me just tell you guys that this game wasn't the easiest because for you to roll a die and get a six was so difficult i mean there were some people that just kept on throwing and getting a six but then there were some people people like lecon aka leco guys i was right about his name his name is actually leco now i got to hear this pronunciation from biggie i'm guessing this our biggie is a yoruba man because it was like leco i'm like uh-uh biggie stop now the guy's name is lecon lecon which one is leco leco anyways guys leco found it difficult getting a six in fact he did not even get a six up until the last second so of course he couldn't really play anything and then biggie was like leco i feel somewhat bad for you and for that reason you can place your effigy on the start point and then as soon as leco placed the effigy he was like do you feel better now and i'm like okay this biggie also has some attitude okay because even when neo was playing he got stuck when he was supposed to pick an egg and you know eat it so the buzzer rang almost when he picked the egg so he dropped it back biggie now said neo you can take the egg if you're that hungry and i'm like okay okay biggie we know you're savage relax okay relax and guys guess what neo took the egg in fact he took a second one like biggie at the age at the age biggie was like neo just one egg i'm like okay okay anyways guys after a long period of time because you guys know that we have 20 housemates who have one minute each so that's about 20 minutes but then again you know that there'll be ads here and there and stuff it was really a long process but we ended up having our two finalists because they had a tie and those included nengi and neil and of course because it was a tie they had to go another round now they had the second round it was a tie yet again they had the third round it was a tie again and then billy was like okay the both of you count how many steps it will take you to get into the head of house spot i mean into the last box right and then both of them actually had two steps yet again and biggie was like okay fine you know what this time around when you guys are rolling the die all you need to get is two okay if you get five if you get six if you get three it doesn't matter all we need you to get is two whoever rolls the die and gets a two first automatically becomes the winner of the head of house challenge and of course after a little bit of rolling and rolling and rolling from both of the housemates nengi emerged the winner because she was actually the first person that got a two and that automatically makes her the first head of house for the season now biggie instructed her to choose a deputy immediately and she chose watoni so watoni would be her deputy for the week both of them will be staying in the lounge for this week they'll be cruising i'm pretty sure that they're going to have a swell time because guys even myself i did get long choice for that room anyways guys now that we know who our first head of house is can we just talk about the housemates in general for a little bit because guys after that live show they had on sunday you know they went into the house i told you guys that they were trying to have dinner and just get to know themselves now later that night they actually played a lot of games they played the concert 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 that's the concentration game they also had the time to introduce themselves to us one after the other now for Dorothy, because she was the first person that spoke in fact she was the one that brought the idea of okay let's introduce ourselves tell us your name tell us what you do and then your spec because guess what your spec might just be looking at you right now your spec might just be right beside you okay you don't want your cup to pass over you you know how they say that the cup now overflow and then it's now run over this one we don't want anything running over i want it to run to us you know you have to run to us now for dorothy she mentioned that she's into procurement right and that for her spec hmm, she said that her spec is looking right at her in that house you know so we don't know who this spec is but i know i'm sure that her spec is the biggest house because when she said it, she was just smiling. She was trying so hard not to look into anybody's eyes so that I will not quickly code. But you guys already know what I do for a living. I will soon decode it. I will soon decode it. Now, the second housemate to introduce herself to us was Tolani Badge. You know, she's a YouTuber. She's a digital marketer. And for her spec, she stated categorically that he must have traveled outside Lagos. He must have traveled outside nigeria because she's schooled abroad and she feels like there's a different kind of exposure that comes with traveling outside the country so whoever it is that she would be with must have traveled outside the country next up was lecon and i don't understand why lecon would be talking and the other housemates would be making noise they're trying to underrate this boy i've been at this man 
They're trying to underwrite him. I get that Twitter had murdered his destiny on that live show, but again, yesterday people now felt like, oh, he's not that bad. He's actually smart. He's actually intelligent because I mean we've gotten to listen to him and stuff. So again, do not be quick to judge a book by its cover. Last last, he was able to introduce himself to us and he told us that he's an artist who is signed to a record label. Of course, he's not allowed to mention what record label he's signed to. And he also said that for his spec, the person should just have sense. Simple and short. Just have sense. Once you have sense, every other thing will fall in place. Now the next housemate to speak was Tricky T. And let me just tell you, Tricky T was just shooting his shot. It was just so obvious. Tricky T was shooting his shot. He said he's a creative artist. He said he's a film production person. He sings and he raps. And then he was like, oh, and by the way, I have traveled outside the country. So basically, he was trying to respond to Tolani Badge, who said that whoever her spec is, must have traveled out and he's like oh by the way i have traveled i've seen me here i don't travel and then when they ask okay where have you traveled to brotherly has traveled to kotonu i'm weak okay I i'm weak but then again she said outside nigeria but why don't travel outside nigeria so which again they find anyways tricky t went on to tell us that he's vastly read i mean he's read a lot of books and there's barely a book you bring to him now or there's barely a topic you want to discuss with him that you will not at least have an idea he also mentioned that he loves breasts and nash okay there's some things a man will see and you just be like look if i don't have this thing in my life something is going to happen now these things for tricky t are breasts and nash he did not stop there he categorically stated that his spec is tolerantly badge i knew it okay i knew it Many say they say, oh, I've traveled abroad though. I've traveled abroad. My time is okay. He plays it like this girl. But they told me I want to get national. So uncle, you need to set your priorities right. Anyways, the next housemate to introduce herself was Kaisha. And for her, she has a skincare line. She's an actor and she's into music. And for her spec, she likes a tall, dark, handsome guy that smells nice next up was kid wire and for him he mentioned that he's a consultant now when he said consultant i was like oh she fresh he might just be a lawyer you know just something related to a lawyer or better still he has a company where he does consulting full time you know with a banking body fresh out of the oven now when they asked him okay uncle what do you consult uncle said it's just a plug i mean if you need anything come to me i'll get it for you I'm like, okay Okay, uncle, that's not the definition of consultancy, okay? Because what are you consulting? You're a plug. Just say I'm the plug. I'm the Indabos. Okay, you're not the Indabos. You are the plug. You have just said that. Anyways, guys, he went on to tell us that he was born in London. And for his spec, he mentioned that his spec is a smart, energetic, fun lady. Someone who loves to read the Bible and someone who has a good body, okay? You have to have a good body and you have to know how to read the Bible well. So, yeah, those are the things he's looking out for. Now, for Prince, our royalty in the house, this guy is not just royalty. This guy has a lot of things attached to his name, okay? He's into fashion designing, he's a model, he's the current Mr. Nigeria, he's into furniture and interior decor, he's also into forex trading. All these things only for one person. Just one cup of hot chocolate. This guy is hot, I cannot even lie, okay? And it's good to know that he has a lot of things he's doing, okay? You cannot just be fine for face empty for pocket and you cannot just be relying on the fact that your father is the king so it's good to know that he has the spirit of hustling in him next up was lucy and she mentioned that before the show she was a medical secretary at a hospital she also mentioned that she has a grilling business in port harcourt now when somebody says i'm into grilling business in port harcourt what comes to your mind huh body and fish exactly Bolly and fish that's the way forward okay so those are the things that she actually does and she also mentioned that her spec is a tall dark handsome guy with a lot of apple okay you have to have chest you have to be very well built so i'm sure that her spec is inside that house it's just that it's going to take us a little time to find out who tickles her fancy and i need to be sure that that person that tickles her fancy she's also going to tickle his fancy back and before i forget yeah she said that aside from all these things that she has mentioned you know the chest and everything two things are important now the actual i'm going lucy can you tell us can you elaborate what are these two things? She was like, hmm, you people should not worry. We should not worry that what? You say you want chest, you want handsome, you know, tall. What else are you looking for if it's not 
better. It's not from your mouth that you're going to hear it. Let, let's move on. Next up was Victoria, aka V. Okay, and she mentioned that she's a singer, she grew in London, and she does not have any particular physical attribute. But then for her, personality matters a lot. The guy has to be calm and crazy at the same time. He has to be well mannered, and of course, he has to be open minded regardless of his religion. Now, for Katrina, she mentioned to us that she sells clothes, she's into real estate, and that she was married before at the age of 22. Currently, she's 27. Okay, she said she was married to an Englishman, but right now they're not together. However, they actually had a daughter together. She also went on to state, I am single. But I am not searching. I only need this platform to push my brand. The girl has vision. She knows what she wants to achieve. But then you know the whole thing about this show. Those people that come and say, I don't want to be in a relationship. They are the ones that live with husband. AKA Mercy. Mercy said I'm here for the game. Ike said my head is in the game. The money, nothing else. But who are the people loving up now? Mm, you got that right. Next up was Lilo and she mentioned that she's a dietitian and she also has her Lilo's collection which means that she sells clothes. Now for her spec, she said that she likes dark skinned guys. Now her reason for choosing dark skinned guys is because she is light skinned and she just wants a little bit of caramel, okay? Cannot just be having white chocolate. You need a little bit of dark chocolate to take things to the next level. So yeah, that's the reason why she prefers dark skinned guys. Next up was Watoni and she mentioned that she sells shoes bags and clothes on Instagram. She also stated that she doesn't have a shop now but that she's hoping that after the show she gets enough money to open a shop and I'm actually hoping and praying that she makes some money out of this show because I like it when people are business oriented, I like it when people are goal oriented. You don't have to stop yourself from starting just because you don't have enough. Start with what you have. Anyways, the next person to speak was Eric. You guys remember the Eric that told us that he lost his virginity at the age of 20. Yes, it's this same Eric that spoke. Okay, and for him, yeah, he's a fitness coach, a cyber security specialist, aka hacker. That's the cocoa of the matter. No need to be using big grammar for all these things, okay? He's a hacker. And he's also a final year student at the University of Lagos studying geography. According to him, his pet can either be light skinned or dark skinned. It doesn't really matter. What he's looking out for is that she has to be God fearing. She has to look good because he loves to stare at his lady. And he particularly mentioned that he loves the not too tall girls. I don't want to use shorts. But you shot now, so people will swallow me, you know, because he kept on doing like this. You know, he has height, too. The guy is very tall, so he was like, I, 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 not so tall girls, you know, he fancies not so tall girls. But guys, let me tell you something I don't know what's going on between Eric and Lilo, okay? Since yesterday, they've been cuddling up, you know, playing games together, just being together, bonding together. She they lie down for a leg, they do on top car, then they talk, you know, they just they follow their step bumper to bumper. So I don't know. But my eye did their body because I need to understand what exactly is going on. Moving on guys, we had Erica and she stated that she's an ex-beauty queen. She's a commercial model and an actor who has a film on Netflix. She also mentioned that her spec is a man with a commanding presence. Like once her bobo enter, you guys turn neck. Gas looks ah ah who be this? That's the kind of person she needs. According to Erica, she cannot be with a broke guy. Now, I know that some people will be like, mm -mm, what do you mean by you cannot be the broke guy? You yourself, what are you doing? She stated it categorically that she's someone who strives to be wealthy, that she's working really hard to make good money. So, she cannot be richer than the guy, okay? And the guy cannot be broker than her. So, he has to be at least some levels ahead of her when it comes to money matters, okay? Most importantly for her, she mentioned that whoever she chooses to be with has to be God-fearing and also must have a lot of respect for women. Next up was Nengi and she mentioned that she finished from the University of Port Harcourt, she read linguistics and that she's also an ex-beauty queen contestant in 2017. She also told us that she has a small shoe business and she's also hoping to make some money after the show to expand her shoe business. I'm praying for you too. I pray that you make some money. I pray that your shoe business grows okay now for her spec she mentioned that the guy can be any complexion if you like red or if you like black or if you like pink or it does not really matter for her what matters is you have to be generous that forget the fact that she's fine you know and all of that stuff forget the fact that she looks good you have to be generous and by the word generous generous in all aspects okay in all the aspects, yes, any aspect that comes to your mind, in that aspect. Mm. Next up was Praise. Now, let me just read out what Praise said to us, okay? He mentioned that he's a male exotic dancer. 
you know, those ones that will be dancing to one that will just be seducing you, that will just be making your head turning on your own, you know, that's the kind of dance he does. He also told us that he's a part time stripper. Yes, another Toyo in the house. Okay, let's hope that this one will give us the stripping vibe because Toyo was trying to be modest about it and he felt really bad that he did not really get time to express himself. So let's hope that Praise has taken a cue from Toyo's experience. Okay, let's just watch out. He went on to say that he has a brand called the Explicit Love Brand. Now, what this Explicit Love Brand is about, put in simple words, is if you want strippers to come for your events, male strippers, so female strippers if you just want strippers he's the plug if you want them to come for your bridal shower whatever reason you might have that will make you want a stripper he's ready to provide you with strippers okay praise is also a final year student at the national open university he also went on to mention to us that he has a two-year-old son called jamie now for his spec any complexion is fine as long as you have big ass as long as you are well articulated, as long as you are patient, and as long as you have a good heart. Now, all of these things are things that are very important to him because number one, of course you guys know he has a child and I'm guessing that he's not with the mother of the child. So basically, whoever he has to be with has to be open-minded and also, the kind of job he does requires someone that is patient because when the guy is doing exotic dance for people and you, you are at home, continue they owe you for us, your husband the outside, they do exotic dance. You know, he gets as be. So his wife or his babe or whoever needs to be patient, okay? If you don't have patience, you cannot fall under respect. Next up was Tochi. And guys, let me just tell you, Tochi made a very big mistake yesterday. A mistake that just made a lot of people start saying a lot of things about him on Twitter. When they asked him to tell us his spec, it was like, for me, I like a guy that... Huh? You like a guy that... A guy... Abigail! Anyways, he made a mistake, okay? It was actually a very honest mistake. He did not know when he said that, yes? Yeah? So he corrected himself. Right, so yeah, he's still on track. He likes skills, just in case you've been crushing. Anyways, for him, he mentioned that he has a fashion store and that he has a transport company. And the man, I'm like, huh? Transport company? And it was almost as if the other housemates were as curious as I was. Now, when they're like, hey, transport company, I was like, guys, calm down. What I mean is that I drive Uber. How does driving Uber equals to you having a transport company? I feel like the person that should say I have a transport company is the owner of Uber. Not you that drive it. There's really nothing wrong with you driving Uber. But you just go straight to the point and tell me, look, I drive Uber. No need to start looking for big, big grammar to just put everything. Just talk about CB. Now that one is sweet pass. Anyways, for his spec, he mentioned that he doesn't like girls who look down on others because of their status. He also mentioned that he doesn't like materialistic girls. Now, the reason he's pointing these things out is because, number one, according to him, he does not have money, okay? He's still someone who is trying to hustle for himself. Number two, he doesn't live on the island. He lives on the mainland. So just in case you think that, okay, when I'm with this guy, I will be living in Lekki or will be living, hmm, you guys are going to be living somewhere on the mainland. And there's really nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. But I get the point he was trying to make. Do not expect that I have too much because I don't, okay? Do not get it twisted and that's okay. Now for Ozo, he mentioned to us that his nickname is Sticky Mena. Sticky Mena. When the housemates were like, uh-uh, what do you mean by Sticky Mena? What does the nickname mean? He was like, well, my friends gave me that name in secondary school. And the reason they actually gave me the name is because ladies tend to stick with me. I mean, I've always been a ladies' man and all of that stuff. And the Mena there is the last part of his name because his full name is Ozoe Mena. He told us that he has a first class in economics. He has a master's degree. He has three sisters. Two of them are medical doctors. One is a lawyer. And that for their family, education is everything. They don't play with it. He also mentioned that he's a sports enthusiast who is ready and willing to change the whole narrative about sports. He actually went on to tell us that he had worked with UEFA before now. For his spec, he mentioned that she has to be light-skinned. She has to be curvy, okay? You need to have everything in the right proportion and that he likes ass. He likes Nash, okay? He's an ass man, according to him. And he loves girls with a steady head. I mean, you have to be smart. Never you carry Nash, they shake up and down. You need to have something in your ugly wishy. You no, know? you need to have something in your brain. And then last but not the least to introduce himself to us was Neo. Now, personally, I have a problem with Neo's introduction. Because this guy first stood up was like, guys, first, I need to say that I'm proud 
to be in the midst of people as intellectual as you are. I've been listening to what all of you have been saying and I've not gotten to any of the places you guys have gotten to. So you guys have to understand, I'm a hustler. Just yesterday I was cooking dummy for myself. Today I'm this. I'm like, uncle, that's, that's not the point. Just tell us what you do for a living. If it's Meshai work you are doing, you are cooking dummy. That's also a business. There's nothing wrong about doing a legit business. Nobody should be shy about whatever kind of business they're doing. As long as they're not killing anybody, then that's fine. Okay, I don't understand. You know, like, the guy was just blabbing plenty things that I don't understand. Last, last, he shall told us that he drives taxi. And again, there's nothing wrong with driving taxi. You can just choose your name up a little bit. Two of them be, I drive taxi. I drive taxi. If you be Uber like that, too. Oh. Now, I want more with a pity. See, I'm not a pity anybody this year. Nobody should come and trigger my own emotion here. I'm going to bash anybody that needs to be bashed. Whether you're a taxi driver or whether you're a banker, I will still bash you. Even told us that he had a restaurant business he was running with his ex girlfriend that got burned. How, like, their family is very large. Say for worry, everybody know them. Say their son is now above for real. I've been above for real. I don't know if his son is B. But say they're plenty gone. Say you get like 30 siblings. 30 siblings, one papa. Oh my, you're about to try, yo. You're about to try. Even tell us, say, get some when you don't even know. When being brothers, when being sisters. Say, they plenty. Say, now, nah, all man for himself. Say, they struggle. Say, life hard. And I was just like, no, that's okay. Thank you. It's okay. It's fine. We understand. Okay, you don't do. You don't do. You don't do talk. Anyways, that's all the gist I have for you guys in today's video. I hope you really enjoyed watching it. I know that this video is long, okay? I just wanted to cover up for the lost grounds. I wanted you guys to know everything that has been going on everything that has been popping in biggest house all right thank you guys so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it please don't forget to give me a very big thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed and guys i need to mention this okay i know that some people have joined it because this is big brother so let me also tap into it i have a second channel okay it's called betha's corner i'm going to leave that on the screen here i'm also going to leave the link in the comment section as well as the description box that's where i post more personal stuff all right i do vlogs i share cooking recipes i do just a lot of things on that channel so if you want to know more about me when I'm not gossiping when I'm not doing webboru that's the plug okay so yes I'm also a plug I'm a plug for YouTube channel so please plug yourself to Better's Corner thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next one bye guys